Hello all, the Irrational Skeptic here, and today I'm going to be continuing, or now, I'm going to be continuing with the MBTI Decoded series, and I want to touch base on the ESFJ, which is why this, ti- this episode is titled The Practical Nature of the ESFJ. The ESFJ is a type that is not talked about much in the MBTI community. I have observed that when they are brought up, it is usually in a disparaging manner. I am assuming that this is due to the nature of the kind of people that do get drawn to typology. Uh, In general, the MBTI attracts intuitive individuals. This is why you'll mostly find INFJs, INTJs, ENTPs, INTPs, ENFJs, ENFPs, INFPs, and ENTJs interested in the MBTI. In my experience, it's actually almost in the order I've listed above. And uh, INFJs will be one of the most likely to dig in and savor every moment. This is because by learning about others, they are actually learning about themselves. It's almost as if this type has a piece of themselves scattered all over the world. So uh, this, the belief is that by finding out how other people work, they can find out how they work and they can finally, quote unquote, fit in. Anyways, sorry for the diversion, but I assure you I'm heading to the juicy part. So... Although ESFJs do not normally have a good ability of abstraction, they have a very real sense of how the real world works. They are extremely realistic, and so when people say that these types like gossiping, talking about others, having small talk, ETC, the reality is that as humans, there really is so much we can do. We can eat, we can be merry, we can have sex... There's honestly not much else to do. And this type understands this to the core. Yes, when you are intuitive, you want to get a bit more creative with your life. Uh, You want to make art, you want to make music, you want to make poetry, you want to make movies, you want to be an actor. And not that censors don't do this at all. I'm just giving um, the kind of story of how intuitives generally have an outlet in life. Uh, But at the end of the day, we all do the same things. Another use of the ESFJs constantly being in everyone's business is that this keeps the flow of information in society moving. If they did not exist, a lot of people would implode as they... They have no one that is interested in their awesomeness. You see, you're awesome, and the ESFJs know that. They won't have a type that takes care of the immediate practical needs in the moment. They won't have a type that gets to the bottom of the real reason why a situation is happening. And so this will bring me to my example. It's just going to be a short story. John is married to Peggy. Every day, Peggy gets mad at John, but she's not quite able to articulate the reason why. Peggy goes to her ESFJ friend, Mary, and they start talking. Mary asks her how her marriage is going. Peggy tries to make everything sound fine, but Mary is smart. She senses that there is something wrong. She quote-unquote intuitively starts discussing about how she went out on a date with a guy last weekend they hooked up but she didn't really like the sex she felt like the guy was too fast and rough he was not sensual enough and didn't know his way around a woman's body as mary is talking about all this peggy gets a weird look on her face a kind of discomfort Peggy asks Mary, hey, I think I may have the same problem with John. When he gets back from work, 
all he wants to do is sit in front of the TV. When I try to get him in the mood, he just ignores me until finally we are in the bedroom and he just tries to do some foreplay for one minute or two. I kid you not, the whole thing is over in about 10 minutes and I'm left unsatisfied. I don't like to say this about him because I do love him and it's really been bothering me. Now that you bring it up your story, I really feel like this is a roadblock in our marriage. Now, of course, Miss I ESFJ Mary is loving all these juicy details of the story. You are too. I won't beat around the bush on this one. Mary might not even have the proper solution for Peggy, but at least they have talked about it. This is really all that is needed, and I won't go into how Mary somehow saves the day and gives the best advice ever. Mary may say, hey, that's not right. You have needs too, you know, (laughs) but have no other real way of giving her some life-transforming advice. Or maybe she does. It depends. But in this video, I am strictly talking about functional preferences. At a certain level, the next thing the ESFJ suggests may be to go out and have a girl's night out. This could relieve some stress for Peggy and she could, you know, go elsewhere and continue seeking the answers that she truly wants or whatever. In the, meet- in the meantime, her immediate need has been resolved. She's been able to talk about her feelings, and at least she, she has this information out in the open where she can now see it. Uh, because for most extroverts, uh, they need to be able, they can't really see into their own mind as easily. So this is why they bounce off of people. They say things to others and see how others react about it, but it allows them to see what is going on inside themselves by projecting it outwards. And so I tell this story of the ESFJ not to disparage them in any way. Yes, what they are doing does not look like much to the intuitive types. The INTJ still kind of despises the ESFJ, is kind of what I'm saying. They can't help it. They don't go well together, and mostly because their purposes are not really aligned in this life. The goal of this video was to make people aware that the ESFJ is a fundamental part of society, whether we like it or not. Uh, This tangentially applies to other sensor types, but in a different way that I will start to pay more attention to in future videos. I am a little tired of uh, sensors not getting as much love from the MBTI community as the intuitive types do get. It is assumed that everyone else is not as cool. And while I get it, Intuitives for a long time have not had an avenue of expression until the invention of the internet. And yes, population-wise, I believe sensors make up about 70 to 80 percent of the world, while intuitives carry only about 20 to 30 percent. In some way, intuitives are a minority, and so it is normal for the conglomeration to appear and thrive. I cannot stress the importance of intuitive types enough, but other people focus on this more strongly, meaning other people that make videos uh, talk about intuitive types all the time, and, you know, I think it's cool. I talk about intuitive types all the time as well. I just believe that we need to spread uh, evenly the information so that we have accurate information out there regarding all the types and we can paint all the types in dark light and in bright light and we can have everything out there looking nice so uh this was just a short video 
I wanted to do. It's not uh, too long. Uh, like, share, subscribe, go down to my comments, leave a comment. And down in my description, I have a t-shirt uh, store or not just t-shirts, there's mugs and other nice accessories and whatnot. So you can go check it out. I do have a discount code that is up for a little bit of time. It is ending on October 15th. So go now fast to get a 30% off. Type in the code live love uh, at checkout and you'll get a 30% off whatever product you're purchasing. So uh, that will be it for now. And I'll see you next time. The Irrational Skeptic signing off.